What is going on, everybody? I am deciding to go live and prompt to after this game. So hopefully we get a few people coming in here. Unbelievable loss for the Seattle Mariners today. Three to two with every opportunity. I, I, I just want to start laughing. I, I, I don't even know where to begin with this. I just, I, I want to laugh at, absolutely at this game because I have never, I don't think I've ever seen three innings like that to finish a game uh, in my life. In my life, Mares down three to two. They go into the seventh inning. They get the first two on with nobody out. Um, gosh, I didn't remember how. I got to pull up the box score. The eighth inning. Oh, no. Seventh inning, Cal flies out. Then Luke Rayleigh advances around to third. Then Luke Rayleigh lines into a double play to end the game and or to end the inning. And then in the eighth inning, you get the bases loaded on a bunch of walks. Ty France grounds into a double play. And then the ninth inning, you've got just, I, I oh, gosh, just absolutely frustrating waiting for some people to get in here there we go we got five people in here welcome in leave your comments i need to go live for this guys i just i just oh my gosh that i, I didn't have the words for it that might be one of the most frustrating mariners losses i have seen in 20 years glock what's up rooftop what's up i mean just uh, <laughs> rooftop like yeah I, hope everyone's having a good day by the way guys got to 3000 subs thank you guys so so much for the support. Truly, truly appreciate it. Um, I'll try to get to all the comments. I'm hoping to get some more people in here. Um, I never like to really ask for super chats, but if you want to leave them, I'll be guaranteed to see a comment and respond to them. But, you know, just, I, I mean, honestly, you know what's funny? Like, I didn't see enough evidence to overturn that call in the ninth inning that Julio was out. Thank you, Roof. Appreciate that. Rooftop making it very clear that the donation should come in. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, I don't even think there was enough evidence to say he was out, but the Mayors didn't deserve to win it. Like, they deserve to have that call. I, I Glock 40, I agree. I think he was safe. I didn't see enough evidence, but they lost the game in the seventh and eighth inning. They, they lost in the seventh and eighth inning. They didn't deserve to win that. That's normally not like me. I'm normally like, hey, you got to get the calls right. Um, and everything like that. And it, I, I thought he was safe. I did certainly didn't see enough evidence to overturn that, but just so many issues. The, the seventh inning, the eighth inning, this offense, just they're either not hitting or not getting on base. Then they get on base and it's just, I, I mean, just by sheer luck of, of circumstances, you think somebody would line a base hit. I, I mean, even if I got like 600 plate appearances, you think eventually I would just dunk one into right field somehow, you know, off sheer luck, close my eyes and swing. I, I just, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. I, I mean, the Ty France double play just seems so predictable. I even said on Twitter, like I, I wasn't even that excited. I, I'm not a negative person. I'm usually very, very optimistic. Bryce, I agree. Garver looks, looks terrible so far. I mean, Jorge Polanco is heating up. I, I will say that. Um, so let me dive into this recap a little bit because I'm kind of all over the place. I usually do that when I go live. It's just a pure venting session. And I'm like, I need my people with me. I need you guys with me <laughs> to help get me through it. Because that one just um, was so brutal. Let's start with the pitching here. I'm going to pull up the box score real quick. I just like to have it on me in case I miss something. Um, leave your comments. Like I said. Um, oh, no. I, rooftop. I appreciate that, man. It's, it's not... Um, I, I feel like I'm worried about being negative about it, man. It's not anything like that. It's just that, like, I, I just don't have my thoughts together for, for this. You know, that game just drove me so nuts that I can't even, like, like I said, normally I try to come on my job, or not my job, but I always want to, like, kind of be the calming voice, like, hey, it's not a big deal. And I'm not even mad that they're 6-10. and 10. I'm not. 6-10, and 10, I can, like, it stinks. I'd rather they be 10-6. and 6. I can live with 6-10. and 10. It's how they've played to get to this six and 10. They don't look good. They have looked awful. And then today they have a chance, right? Like they get down early, they battle back a little bit and they have every opportunity. The Cubs were almost handing them the game in the late innings there. And I mean, just don't even do anything and you might tie that game up, you know? And it's just so frustrating because you were almost gifted this win, the Cubs did not look like they wanted to win that game in the late innings. And you just, can't, I mean, you can't even push the tying run across. I mean, first and second, nobody out both innings. First and third, one out in the seventh. Bases loaded, one out in the eighth. I mean, I'm not even asking for hits. A sack fly, which isn't out. 
which is truthfully like not a good result. I mean, it gets a run and I'm not saying it's not good, but like it's truthfully, you want more the Mariners should have busted that game open and won it five, six to three, but they can't even tie it. I would have been happy if it was three to three going to the ninth. And honestly, had it just been tied going to the ninth, that would have been terrible. That would have been a bad result, but we would have been like, hey, you know, they, they tied it up. Even that wouldn't have been good enough. I, I mean, thank you, Mahanda Civic. Appreciate that. Um, the congrats on the 3K. Thank you guys so much um, for the support. Got me to 3,000 subs. If you're new here, hit the like button on this stream. Hit subscribe. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to get to as many comments as I can. Um, if you want, leave a super chat. I'll be sure to see that, and I'll be able to respond to it. I just have a lot of comments coming in. I do appreciate everybody's takes here. Um, Ron says the game actually over. It's over. Yeah, they they bat in the bottom of the ninth. The bottom of the ninth was a mess. Um, two two quick outs, and then Cal Raleigh singles. Julio pinch runs, which is is fine. Julio should pinch run there, and then Julio is picked off first base. And I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, I agree. Y two K. Oh, Christian man, congrats to your Cubs this weekend. Good to see you in here. Uh, congrats on getting the two out of three, my friend. Uh, nice job. You got a good Cubs have a good ball club, like the pitching staff. The offense is legit and the bullpen's good enough on the back end. You guys, I think can definitely win the uh, NL central this year, but um, you know, Julio gets the day off, which is fine. Give him a little mental health day, whatever needs to be to get his head right. And then he comes in to pinch run and gets picked off. Julio's on the field for 11 seconds. And blows it. It's not all Julio's fault that they lost this game, but it's like, hey man, we're going to give you this day off, get you right. Okay, we kind of need your speed on the base pass. Uh, someone said he should have pinched hit. That might might have been actually a decent option too. But I, I get giving him the day off with the bat. We're going to send you into bat or to run. <laughs> and like I said, I don't even think he was necessarily out. But it's just like it's so fitting. It is so fitting. They didn't deserve to win. And I'm normally not. Someone like that. Exactly why 2K, that was the opposite of a mental health day for Julio. That might have been worse for him long term to have that kind of game. I'm not la I'm not trying to make fun of, you know, anybody. I'm not laughing at Julio. I'm laughing with this team and stuff like that. Um, let me get into the box score here. Like I said, truly appreciate you guys all being in here. 36 people in here. Hit that like button. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Um, okay, let's try to get into an actual breakdown here. Uh, Luis Castillo, six innings, seven hits, three runs, two earned, zero walk, nine Ks. Castillo was better. Castillo was much better today. I still, you know, had Castillo been really good the first three, the first three starts, I think we'd all be very happy with this one. I think because the first three starts weren't look, weren't very good. This doesn't look quite as good as it maybe was the first inning that run probably shouldn't have scored Luis Castillo, the fielder made a throwing error on a tough play on a little, you know, uh, two footer by Cody Bellinger that allows the run to score Castillo gets 23 swings and misses um, on the day, which is ties for the highest this year in baseball, no walks, nine Ks. I thought early on his command control still wasn't great, but I thought he settled in. And if this offense could do anything, Luis Castillo pitched well enough to win a game today against a good offense. That's a good Cubs offense, two earned runs, no walks, nine Ks, six innings, you know, I, again, I thought early on there were some signs that I didn't love. Still gave up that Castillo home run that seems to be a bugaboo in every single start he has. But for the most part, I, I can't sit here and be super mad uh, at Luis Castillo. And if this offense could do anything, there's no reason you can't get him a W with that start. Um, DeGust did his job for an inning. Spire shut out inning and Trent Thornton, two strikeouts um, and a scoreless ninth. The pitching did their jobs. Uh, the pitching absolutely did their job today. Let's look at the offense and I'll get to some questions, guys. I do see the comments coming in. Um, I wanted to have some semblance of a breakdown this game. Uh, first of all, Dom Canzone gets hurt, hurts his shoulder. Um, sounds like it's going to be something that might keep him out for a while. I'm thinking maybe a month or so. Uh, Samad Taylor would be my guest to come up, although Brian Anderson was pulled from the game in Tacoma. I know he has played some left field. I'd prefer Taylor, honestly. If Canzone's going to miss some time, I might go look at getting Tommy Pham or someone like that on the free agent market. Um, I like Samad Taylor. Brian Anderson might be fine for a couple weeks, but if it's going to be anything more than like a month, I, I might go. I mean, I don't know if they're going to do that, if this ownership's going to open a checkbook for anybody in April, but I'd maybe look at getting Tommy Pham in there, platooning him with Luke Rayleigh. 
Mitch Hanniger and Wright, you can still get him the occasional day off to, to help keep him healthy. Um, and then obviously Julio in center. Uh, let's look at the box score today. And even though there might have been some, yeah, it could be Cade Marlowe as well. Um, Donatello saw that. Could could definitely be Cade. It'll be Cade, Taylor, or Brian Anderson. I'm thinking Anderson because he was pulled, but maybe that wasn't related to uh, the Canzone injury. JP one for three with a walk. And again, here's my thing. Some of the numbers today I don't think are going to be like five walks, five hits, but just uh, again, nobody, nobody, wh where is, where is that line drive into the gap from somebody? Where is it that they're getting that they're getting walks and then the occasional single, can someone put a ball into the gap to score a couple runners? I thought for sure. Well, I, I never think for sure with the Mariners, but in the seventh and eighth, I'm like, here we go. This is it. Someone's going to stick one into the gap here, score a couple runs. We're going to win the series. And the vibes are going to feel good. The vibes are so off right now with this team. It's not even, not even funny. Um, but JP one for three with the walk. Hanniger was one for four. Jorge Polanco swinging the bat pretty well. Polanco is probably the one guy right now that's not really in my doghouse. Um, Polanco played well. One for three, had the home run, two run home run, walked. So on base twice. Polanco's heating up. The last week, I know his WRC plus over the last seven days has been like 137 or something like that. So Polanco's starting to heat up. Um, good to see. Polanco's the one guy that I'm not going to get on today. Ty France 0 for 4 at the crucial double play. Canzone didn't get a bat. Dylan Moore 1 for 3. I mean, Dylan Moore has been one of their better hitters th this year, which, I mean, I like Dylan Moore. I think he's perfect for the role he's in. But if, if you watch this team over the first two weeks, if you went to somebody that's never watched the Mariners, they're like, just watch this team and tell me who the best players are. I mean, you'd say Dylan Moore through two weeks. You'd be like Dylan Moore and somebody, maybe Logan Gilbert would be your, your guesses. And you can't have Dylan Moore being your best player. Love Dylan. Absolutely love Dylan. But he cannot be like your best player. And even Dylan Moore, like his OPS is 643. It's not like he's killing it. He's just had better at bats. He's hit the ball pretty well. He's gotten on base. He's made some impact on the bases, played good defense. You know, that would just be, <laughs> that would just, you know, the eye test, he's been their best player. Mitch Garver just, oh, he looks bad. And, and I never, listen, 16 games should not allow you to make like definitive statements on a player, but man, does Mitch Garver look bad. I mean, some of the swings, I remember this was like, I forgot who said it. It was a long time ago. It might've been, if you guys remember old lookout landing with Jeff Sullivan and I forgot who he was talking about, but he was like, I can't even imagine what this player hitting a home run even looks like. That's how I feel with Mitch Garver right now. I can't even fathom what Mitch Garver just barreling up one out of the ballpark even looks like. I mean, some of these three pitch strikeouts that in the ninth, it was just, it's such a bad at bat. He did have a walk, um, you know, great. You know, that, that's good, but so got to mix in some slugging in there as well to, to get some runners home a little bit. And Garver just looks rough. I know yesterday he hit a couple line drives hard. Um, and that's great. Like that's, that's good. But I mean, eventually you've got to have some results to go with it. I'm at the point, Hey Stu, how you doing? My friend, good to see you in here. Um, you know, what was, where was I? I lost my train of thought there, but like, I don't even care. Like hit a bunch of hits with 40 exit velos that drop in my gosh, something to at least get the confidence going. Cal one for four had the base hit, which was nice. But again, Cal hasn't really gotten going. Oh, Julio, 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 Julio <laughs> gets the day off. Like I said, which was good. I I'm fine. Giving Julio the day off today comes into run, which I mean, I guess you could have had him pinch hit there. I I'm fine. I honestly, like we all know they weren't going to going to win that game anyways, <laughs> but <laughs> it just didn't feel like it. And then to get picked off, I think it was Y2K who said in the chat, like so much for that mental health day off for Julio. Like that's going to be much worse for him now <laughs> than it was before. Luke Raleo for three. He had the double play. He did hit the ball 106 on the double play, but they, you know, you guys, here's the thing. That's great, but they're all on the ground. Everything these guys are stinging for the most part is just buried into the ground. Like lift the ball, lift it up in the air. I, like I'm saying it like I could do it. I'm not trying to lecture these guys. Like they're all better, better, like a thousand times better major league, major, God, a thousand times better baseball players than I would ever dream of being, but you got to elevate these a little bit, you know, and I can sit here and look at exit velos and I do, and I go to Savant and look at that, but we can't just keep saying, oh, they're hitting 107 on the ground and just getting unlucky. 
Got to elevate these a little bit, guys. You elevate the ball, good things happen. If that's elevated by Rayleigh, you're probably looking at something in the gap that ties or gives the Mariners the lead. Uh, Rojas, oh, for one with two walks. Rojas would be the other guy um, that you'd probably say has been like the best player on the team. And it's not good if Dylan Moore, Josh Rojas are your best two players. But that's seventh and eighth inning. I mean, you'd think I'd be used to that. you think we'd all be like, yep, that's the Mariners. The eighth inning one, the seventh inning one drove me nuts. The eighth inning one was just like so predictable. So, so predictable with the Ty France double play. And I know Ty's been swinging a little bit better this year. But in that pitch, how do you even hit that pitch into a double play? It was like an elevated fastball. How do you even ground that out? And again, I'm not saying like I would do it, but just as a major league player, how do you even ground that pitch out? How do you hit that into the ground? That pitch was tailor-made for a sack fly in that situation. Like just tailor-made for it right there. And like, and Ty buries it into the ground for the double play. It's just, it's just so, so frustrating. Let me get to some comments here again, guys. Um, if you, I'll try to get to as many as I can. Um, if you want me to definitely read it, I'd recommend, um, super chats. That's going to be the best way for me to see it. Mark says, look, Ray has been bad trades for knowing someone in the stadium yells. I, I heard that actually, um, that, that that's what they did. I did hear, um, that, uh, I heard that fan yelling after that that you suck to Luke Rayleigh. I don't blame any fan for yelling at any of these guys. Um, I will say this. Luke Rayleigh needs more consistent um, at-bats. You know, I can't get on him too much. He's only had like 15. He's going to get more at-bats because Canzone is going to be out for a while. So we're going to see more of Luke Rayleigh um, for sure. But, you know, as much as I'd like to see him get more at-bats, he certainly hasn't uh, been super inspiring so far either. In his minimum, I mean, nobody has outside of Josh Rojas, honestly. Hannah says there's no offense on the, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it has been, it's been brutal. Um, you think just by sheer, even the 2010 team, like, I don't remember being this frustrated with them. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I'm sure I was. It was 13 years ago. Um, but I, I don't remember being this, um, this frustrated with them you know, as bad as they were. And, and this offense will be better than the 2010 team. But, um, you know, I, I just like, this has felt so more frustrating to me. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just need to go back into um, 2010 and see how I felt. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Why two cases? Luke Rayleigh, I feel has actually made some. Yeah. Like Rayleigh's he, he's good defender. I actually think you're going to get better defense from Rayleigh than you are can zone for sure. Um, and, and I think with some consistent at bats that, um, Rayleigh, you know, should be okay overall. So I'm not too worried. And he's looked good on the bases, good defender, you know, tough day today. It would have been nice just to get a sack fly from him, just to give him some, um, semblance of like, okay, things are turning around a little bit, but we will see plenty of Luke, Luke Rayleigh here very, very quickly. Stu, what's up, my friend? He says there's been no hitting for... Yeah, you know, I mean, again, this is one of those things where we should probably be giving it more than 16 games to say that Brant Brown isn't doing his job. You, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get... Like, I'm all with there with the frustration. This game was like... I, I joked on um, Twitter. It's like my v villain origin story with this game. This one just like... This was a game that like broke me because it was just so winnable. It was so, so winnable to see... John, just to let you know, man, I, I see the comments. I, I'm with you. You don't have to repeat them. I, I see that Gar yep, Garver's definitely been awful. Uh, I don't, you don't need to post it like 10 times though, man. I, I see it. <laughs> um, so I, I see that. I'm with you. He's been awful so far for sure. So yeah, we just can't keep spamming the chat because I'm missing, missing people's messages. Let's see. Let's get some other comments here. You're good, man. I, I'm mad too. You, you're you're good. Just just got to work work on the spam a little bit there, man. I, I'm frustrated too. It's all good. I I get it. I I totally get the frustration. Let me see here. Game face sports. What's up, my friend? How you doing? He says, what What do you think about playing more small ball? I I, I I'm all for like a little small ball, a little send the game in motion. I'm not against that at all. Um, I don't know if they had the hitters up in those situations to do it. Here's the thing. The team's just not built to really play much small ball. I mean, you could a little bit with like Julio and some things like that. You know, I mean, they, they have the speed. Dylan Moore, um, 
you know, Rojas. I think are guys that could play small ball and stuff like that, but they're just really not built for it. Unfortunately, I'm all for it. Like any, listen, anything you can do to manufacture some runs, I will support. Like I, I, I'm not against it, but even with that, like to me right now, it's not so much a strategy issue. It's just, these guys aren't hitting, you know, they're just not putting the ball in the gaps. They're, they're, they're just not putting up good at bats. And when they are good at bats, they're a walk or a single, which is fine. Nothing, nothing against walks and singles. You can win plenty of games with that, but eventually someone's like, I've said, someone's got to put a ball in the gap here to, to get this thing going. Um, and, and listen, if that takes small ball, then, then so be it. I, I really, I, I'm fine either way. They just, they, they've got to do something to get it going. So I, I wouldn't be against it. I just don't know how much they're built to do that. Let's see here. The game or what's up, my friend. I mean, not all the time, but when, oh, with the small ball, I think you're referring to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Donatello says, let's DH Hanniger. Some give Garver a break, bring back some modern Marlowe. I, I think we'll see one of them back. Although I'm not sure what looks like Brian Anderson. Um, was pulled from the game. So maybe it's going to be Brian Anderson, which not wild on that. Um, I wouldn't mind Hanager getting some DH um, opportunities to be honest. Um, here's the thing though. It's tough because like you need Garver, you know, and that's the thing. It's like with Julio, I'm all for Julio getting a day off and giving Garver a couple days, but eventually you're going to need these guys to produce. And you know, the guys behind them are just not as good, even though, I mean, you can't be much worse. I could go out there and not be much worse right now. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's just so frustrating because, and that's where I will give Scott like a little bit of a s- sympathy. Like these guys just have got to play better and y- you need them. You're going to need, if, if this team wants to be good, Mitch Garver is going to have to be good. So it, it's just so frustrating. Like you said, that Dylan Moore and Josh Rojas are sort of the, the best players right now. Y2K, thank you, has become a channel member. Appreciate it. We did a members only live stream yesterday with the contest giveaway. Thank you for joining my friend. Happy to have you on board and hopefully you'll be there for the next members only live stream. Let's see. Let's, seriously though, our stars need to play better. We literally can't play well. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, that, that that's kind of what I talked about yesterday in my post game. And um, I'm a hundred percent with you. Like the stars at the end of the day, you know, like I said, Sebi all doesn't matter. All, you know, all these little things don't really matter if the stars don't play. I can't even really use the excuse of, oh, Brash and Munoz haven't come back yet because that's not going to fix anything right now. The bullpen has been fine for the most part. The best players have to be better. Seth Adams, thank you, my friend, for the super chat. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I say we call up the prospect bats sell now. Um, I'm not quite there yet in terms of selling now, but uh, I certainly understand it. And where you're coming from, I mean, they can't do much worse than Mitch Garver, right? Um, I, I will have a video at the end of April where I'll kind of maybe take some of my emotion out of and try to do a breakdown of where they're at, what they need to do. Listen, I, I will say this and Seth, thank you again for the super chat, my friend. I truly do, do um, appreciate that. Um, lost my train of thought there for a second. This team looks bad. Like six and 10 is not the issue for me. I, I You can recover from six and 10. The division lead right now, I think, is eight and eight in Texas. There's a chance. I'm not saying it's going to happen. There's a chance the Mariners are in first place by Wednesday. I mean, it's possible, but they look really bad. And that's my concern. I am starting to get worried. The bats have been, they'll they'll be better. Like these guys aren't going to OPS 400 all season, but it's just, they don't look at the role. They're not losing a bunch of one run games. If they were losing a bunch of walk-off hits, I could come on here and be like, Got to get Brash and Santos back. We just got to get those two guys in there and and it will be fine. Chad Wright, appreciate the super chat, my friend. 54% is still in play. No one panic. I mean, right now they're well below 54. I would kill to be at 54% right now. It would probably be in first place for the division. Um, So we'll see what ends up happening there. But 54 would be a nice little improvement so far. Sour, what's up, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Scott can't bother because the front doesn't care. Look at the sauce season. Uh, I think the front office, I, I think it's more ownership. I still put more of it on the ownership, but here's the thing. If it doesn't work and this team fails, and regardless of what we think about Scott, Jerry, and Justin, they have to be held accountable for it. And we're only 16 and I'm not giving up on the season yet, but eventually like, you know, results matter. I can sit here and go through Savant for four hours and do all these things. But if they're not, they're not winning games, the guys up top have to be held accountable. I don't trust John Stanton coming to find anybody better to run this team. 
Um, I don't think they're going to find anybody that's going to come in and just all of a sudden turn this team into the Dodgers or anything. But yeah, I mean, the guys up top have to be have to be held accountable if if it doesn't, you know, or yeah, I figure you're probably talking more about ownership sour. Yeah, I, I kind of figure that's where you're coming from, my friend. Let's see. Let's get to this one. Spinning wheels of Scott ordering lots of DoorDash. He looks relaxed, but he doesn't look super full. But the DoorDash, I think he'd be more full. Maybe the Mariners are going to Pizza Hut after the game. Or I'm hoping one of the moms brought the orange slices for them after this game. So we'll see. <laughs> Seth says Rainiers are killing it right now. Bats and the Miners looking way more. At yeah, I mean, they, they really do. They And they look, the vibes feel a lot better watching the, the minor leagues right now. Listen, if this gets really bad, I'm going to have to do some minor league post-game <laughs> recaps for you guys. Because I don't know how much you guys are going to want to listen to post-game recaps for a team that's 30 and 80. I don't think it'll get that bad, but you know what I mean. Um, thank you guys so far for the super chats. Like I said before, try to get to as many comments as I can, but, um, a super chat means I, you know, I'm guaranteed to see it. If you guys want to do that, and thanks for Y2K for becoming a channel member today. Really, really appreciate it. Welcome on board. If you guys want not to plug things, but if you want to become a channel member twice a month, there are members only live streams. Uh, we did one last night with a contest giveaway, uh, for a new era hat. The more members I get, the more the prizes can be, you know, maybe tickets. Do you want to go to watch this team right now? Maybe you can go to tickets to something else <laughs> and we'll, we'll work something out. But yeah, think about becoming a channel member and the member streams are great too. Cause it's a little bit more one-on-one -on -one type situation. Um, you know, positives today. I, I thought Luis Castillo did look better. Uh, I, I will say that Castillo looked more like La Piedra today. So that, that is good. Um, I, I will say after like the first three starts, I'm still not 100% like, oh, Castillo's back. I still saw some things today I didn't love. But if this was like Castillo's first start of the year, I think we'd all be really happy and, and totally fine um, with how he pitched today. And again, today's on the offense, right? Like three runs. Again, that's a good Cubs offense. They can swing it. And it, it's just you know, and the pitching held him to three runs over nine innings. Pitching kind of did its job yesterday. I mean, the sole home runs burnt them, but it's this offense. They've scored six runs once. They haven't, they're the only team that hasn't had 11 hits or more in a game. And it looks like it takes every ounce of energy they have to produce one run. I mean, it seems like it just takes every thing physically that they have in their bodies to have a run cross the plate. They work the walks, which is fine. That they they had some good at bats in the seventh and eighth inning. Hear me out before anybody jumps on that. They they get the runners in scoring position, and then they just the seventh inning, first and second, nobody out. Two pitches later, the inning is over. Two pitches later, and I know Cal and Rayleigh both had exit velos over a hundred on their hits. I get it. I'm an exit velo guy, but I'm also a results guy, and eventually you have. Somebody's got to put it where they ain't. I, and like you guys have talked about small ball. I'm not a huge small ball guy. I just don't know if this team is really built for it, but something, something to just like light a fire. Maybe you put a button play and they throw it away, you know, and, and just something gets you going a little bit. Look at the Red Sox game that they won. Um, you know, it was a couple bloops that fell in. It's sometimes not about the hard hits. Now, hard hits are great. And the more you hit a ball hard, the more sustainable that's going to be. But sometimes you just need a, a little something to get a spark going and they're just not getting it. Um, I don't know if they're over trying. I don't even know if that's a thing necessarily, but they just, I mean, and they don't look comfortable when they're up there. Now that could be a product that could be like the vibes thing. Like the vibes seem really off, but it could just be because they're losing. So of course the vibes are going to look off when they're, not winning, but it's also like they just, I don't know. They look scared of that. I don't know. That just might be me looking too much into it. Um, yeah, you know, it kind of does, especially on the hitting side. It does spinning wheels. look like they hate playing baseball. Like, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, even like Julio in that ninth just looked, you know, defeated. They, they look beaten down a little bit. Let's see. Steven says, I think they're hitting strategies. Having a look at a bunch of pitches, trying to run up the pitch count. Yeah, it, it, I, I think that's fair. And, and listen, sometimes it can work. On Friday, it kind of worked. You know, they only scored four, but but I mean, for this team, four feels like fifty right now. And th they worked Wix's pitch count. They got it up, and then they drove him out. And that's kind of, I think, what their philosophy is. We get the pitch count up, 
and then we can, you know, get the pitcher tired, fifth, sixth inning, you drive them out of the game. Problem is they're not doing that. And they had chances today. They absolutely had chances against Assad and against that Cubs bullpen. Naris comes out, walks the first two guys, you know, you know, like it's nothing, but somebody, and I know I'm repeating myself, but somebody has got to put a bat on the ball and drive into the gap. Daddy Wright says we need Scott to give himself third. Like, hey, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm not against Scott getting angry here and just doing something maybe to spark a little something right now. And again, I'll reiterate guys, the record doesn't bother me that much. I'm not super mad at six and 10. Got to get Boar's comment in here. Trying to know he was going to get picked off. I know. Boar, man, it just, I just, I didn't even think, honestly, I thought he was safe. But it just deserved to end like that. That game 100% to er, to end there. Yeah, I don't really like, I, I don't mind Scott Pinch running him there um, necessarily. Like, I, I get Pinch running for Cal in that spot. And unfortunately, Dylan Moore had to come in for Canzone. So that makes it a little bit tougher in that situation. Um, you know, maybe you have Julio Bat there for Rayleigh. But then Rayleigh's out of the game. So, you know, I, I you know, it just, it makes it tougher. Let's see. Nolan says what happened to what happened there at the end of Julio's off day mental rest. Uh, Nolan, unfortunately, I think the Canzone injury played a part in that because Dylan Moore had to come in for Canzone. So you almost have to have somebody run for Cal there. I'm not going to get on Scott too much for that one. Like I get where you guys are coming from. If you're going to give the guy a day off, give him a day off. But if Rayleigh gaps one there and Cal doesn't score, I mean, that's going to look awful. And you have Julio sitting there, you know, that can put the game in motion a little bit. So uh, you know, I listen, and here's the thing. I will say this. The, the goal was to give Julio a mental day off. And that was, might've been like the worst possible outcome for his mental health today possible is getting picked off there to end the game. Um, Steven, I couldn't agree more considering how, they, and that's my frustration right now, to be honest, the record doesn't bother me that much. Six and 10, you can come out of, that's not a problem. Like you sweep Cincinnati. I'm not saying they're going to. But if you do it, you're 9-10, you go to Colorado, like it's not impossible to climb out of 6-10. and 10. The tough part is they look like they should be like 4-12 and 12 or 3-13. and 13. And I can't point to like, I mean, I can point to players being terrible. That's been a factor. But I can't point to like, you know, hey, we just need to get this guy back. Brash and Santos will help, but what are they going to do? You're behind in every game. Like, what would they have done today? Kept them at three? Well, so did DeGus and Spire and, and other guys. So, you know what we'll see. The back it up pot. Oh, appreciate. Hey, man, how you doing? At your O's, oh, your O's had a tough weekend against Milwaukee, I think. But they are, um, you got to be excited about Jackson Holiday coming up. It's only 14th. Ems will be there. Then I think they will. I, I still believe in this team. Um, I, I, you know, I can't, I can't like end my hopes after 16 games when I had so much hope. Um, it's just been how they've played, and I think I'm just kind of echoing what people are saying in here. It's just very much how they've played so far. That, that's frustrating. Gunner got picked off by his old teammate. Yeah, it, it has been. It has been. But you got Jackson Holiday up now. Man, the Orioles are just stacked. That's got to be a fun team to root for, man. Hope hope you're enjoying it. Let's see. I saw one comment I wanted to respond to here. Let's see. Let's get to this one. Just coming back doesn't mean anything. Yeah, exactly. Ryan, no, you're 100% right. You know, they can't, like someone I saw it earlier um, said, you know, they can't swing a bat. Exactly right. If this team was losing like a bunch of one run games right now, if they were, you know, blew it in the ninth today, the, the Brewers game from, from last week, if it was all games like that, I would absolutely point to Brash and Santos and be talking about how getting those guys back um, is going to be huge. And they absolutely need those guys back. But right now there's nothing they can do unless you're blowing leads. Those guys aren't going to sit now. They're going to make the team better. Like they're good pitchers. They're, they're certainly going to help because hopefully you will be in those situations going forward. So I want to be clear. Like I want them back, but it's not like them missing has been the reason for the failure. I, I kind of wish it was because it'd be easy, easy to point to with, with this. It'd be an easy thing to just identify. Um, I mean, you know, so it's just, uh, no, they play tomorrow. They play the Reds at 642. I guess they're doing the 42 for Jackie Robinson Day. So you do have to sit through a game tomorrow, unfortunately, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Boar, my friend, if this is Luis and Julio, we get all year. Obviously, not this bad, but even league average on cuts him with Garber. Yep, yeah, Boar, 
this is it right here. I mean, I, I said it last night, Boar hits it right in the head. That's why I'm not, you know, diving too much into like some of the other role players that are struggling, because if, if this is what it's going to be, and obviously I think we all know, like Julio's not going to OPS 400, Castillo's ERA is not going to be six. Garver's probably not going to OPS 400 either, but even a little bit better is not going to be enough. And we can sit here. That was kind of my point last night. I wasn't trying to like say that Scott's off the hook for any poor bullpen management or pinch hitting situations. But when the dust settles, it will not matter if Julio, JP, I'm going to take Polanco off the list now because he's been hitting a little bit. Cal, Garver, Kirby, Castillo. Castillo was better today, but still overall, if those guys don't, don't do it, then it will not matter. You're going to lose 90 games if those guys aren't, you know, if they're what they are now, which they shouldn't be, but if they do what they do now, you're going to lose 95. If they're league average, maybe you can squeak to 500, but they have got to be your superstars. They're your best players, and and they have to they have to step up and, and just and and be better. Um, you know, I, I'm not much for like oh clutch and stuff, but somebody has to step up and deliver the big hit. You know, I. I thought it might be Mitch Hanniger today. I'm like, Mitch is the guy that feels like would deliver Mitch Hanniger. Um, I, did I say Gar? I think I said Garver. I meant to say Mitch Hanniger. Um, you know, he's a guy that you expect in those clutch situations to come through. I thought that at bat in the eighth, I'm like, Mitch is going to come through here. It just feels like a spot where you get that Mitch Hanniger, you know, that huge hit from him. Um, and he fouled off a bunch of pitches and, you know, struck out. It's just somebody somebody's got to do it. You know, Cal, Cal's usually a guy that's super clutch and, and he couldn't come through um, in his big at bat, you know, Ty France, who listen, yes, I think we all are on the same page. That was going to be the most obvious double play ever, but he has had some clutch hits um, before, you know, just that little classic Ty France in the right field. Instead, it's a double play. Someone has to step up and I don't know, don't know who it is, but um some, someone's got to step up and deliver for this team. Starting pitching has gotten better here. You know, I, and that's the thing. You actually got good starting pitching. Cubs have a good offense, and the pitching was solid in this series. Bryce Miller was really good on Friday. Emerson Hancock absolutely did his job last night. Absolutely. I would have signed up for that any day. And Castillo was, was good today. And, you know, I still think there's some things where the command doesn't look quite right, and I'd love to see a Castillo start where he doesn't give up a home run. But 23 swings and misses, which ties the highest in Major League Baseball this season. Nine strikeouts, no walks. One of the runs shouldn't have scored. I mean, that that's good enough. That should be enough to win the game. The pitcher shouldn't have to have seven shutout innings every start. I mean, Logan Gilbert almost got a loss in Toronto for, for, for everything, for the seven and two-thirds he did. Naz says, uh, should have kept retained Murphy. Yeah. Now, I would have liked to see Murphy brought back. I get the injury history uh, makes it a little bit tougher, but Zaval is just not not good. Um, you know, we'll give him maybe he's a good defensive player. He's only had 13 at bats. I will certainly try not to judge people based on that. But um, and I still I, I've said a lot of videos. So you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but I, I still think Murphy missing la September last year was a huge reason his team to make the playoffs. There was a lot of Brian O'Keefe at bats we had to sit through. Not trying to blame Brian O'Keefe that the Bears didn't make the playoffs in 2023, but um, I absolutely think um, that missing Murphy was huge. Bore that all that means you've been to four games, your own fours, you're due. You are due for a W. So we need to get you to more games, is actually the issue here. <laughs> uh, Stu says, I'm convinced what we've seen so far as the worst vision team you'll see. It's going to possibly have proven me wrong. You know, I, I will say this, Stu, every time I say that, it seems to get worse. I mean, I've literally sat there and been like, hey, listen, even if, you know, we don't think Mitch Garver's the greatest hitter in the world, it's going to be better than Tommy LaStella. And honestly, I think he's probably been worse than Tommy LaStella. Cold Wong, there's no way he was going to be worse than Adam Frazier, despite Frazier's postseason heroics. Cold Wong was worse. Um, I, I'm with you. I do think this is about as bad as it can get um, for this team right now. But my 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 concern is this, to be honest. You know, let's say the offense does turn it around. Does the bullpen drop off then? Like, you know, I've, I've been talking about Brash and Santos, how getting them back is not going to help the current problems, but this offense turns it around, and then you're going to have games where, like, you've got Brent DeGus and Tyson Miller in the eighth inning or something, and they can't hold the lead, or Ryan Stanek can't hold it. 
So it's like super frustrating. And that hasn't happened yet. I shouldn't say that, but like, it just feels like then that'll happen. That was last year in that first half. The pitching would be great. They couldn't score. They would score and then they couldn't pitch. And it, this year, it's kind of been a little bit of both. I, I think the pitching has been better, obviously, than the hitting. Um, you know, Logan's been solid. Castillo is better today. Bryce Miller has been fantastic. The bullpen, for the most part, has held up pretty well overall. Um, but the offense is just, I mean, have they come out of the gates with a lot of runs. I the Cleveland game, I think they scored four early. But other than that, I mean, have they scored before the first four innings this year? I mean, can they have a game where they get their starting pitcher a lead? How many leads has a starting pitcher pitch with this year? Honestly, Bryce Miller against the Cubs had a lead. Logan had a one-nothing lead against Toronto. Um, which I, I'm not really gonna even count that because that's just such a minimal you know, one mistake, it's tied. Bryce Miller against Milwaukee. Emerson Hancock against Cleveland. I think that's it. I'm just been like four games where their pitchers have actually been able to pitch with the lead. The Boston win was kind of a miracle in late inning comeback one. And then the Blue Jays won. The other win was another extra inning one where they were that close to a little blooper dropping in and beating, beating them. We get to this question from Julian who says, any ideas when Class A, Locklear, Young, or Bliss could come up if offensive productions continue to struggle. Um, I don't think we'll see Class A or Young um, until like later in the year would be my guess. I think they would be post-All-Star break guys if the team is struggling and they bringing them up. The thing with Bliss is the guys he would come up for actually been okay. Urias and Rojas are actually offensively doing their jobs funny enough that those are the guys that are actually been okay so far and Polanco's heating up as well. So there's not really a place for bliss right now. Locklear, I mean, could come up and play some first base. My guess though, actually that, you know, now with Canzone being out because Rayleigh is going to play in the outfield. I mean, if Ty, but Ty France is not going to be, they're going to give him like at least till the all-star break, I think to, to do something unless it just gets really bad. So I would say Locklear, is you said Locklear, Classe, Young, and Bliss. Locklear is probably the closest to being able to control to actually like having a spot on this team, um, would be my guess. But you know, I just don't see where Bliss, the, the guys that they would come up for, um, the rest of them are actually kind of doing okay, funny enough. <laughs> Let's see. Um, are you talking about Canzone? What what did they say, guys? It was a sprain. I, I I think there was they were talking like a month or so was the rumors when I heard the injury. I'm I forgot what the injury was. Something with the shoulder. Uh, if maybe someone in the chat can, I, I guess I could just pull this up for you guys. Sorry, I, I don't do a lot of live streams, so I get kind of distracted. Not love the comments. Please keep them coming. But I look over at the comments and I'm trying to make a thought and I forget what I'm saying. So I apologize, guys, if the live stream has been a bit all over the place at times. Let's see. If there's any can zone updates, I mean, we probably won't know for certain um, the extent of the injury, but I, I would imagine can zone is on the, is going to go on the AL. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Daddy, right. W Daddy, which I said, daddy, right. Earlier. I'm apologize. I apologize for that. Uh, says four to six weeks. Yeah. That's, that's about what I heard too. So Brian Anderson was pulled from Tacoma. Um, I know he has played some left field. That would be kind of an odd move to me. I'd rather see some odd Taylor, but I think what they might be doing here is they want to get the offense going and they think Anderson's the better bat. So they're going to go with Anderson. Honestly, if Canzone's going to legitimately miss like five, six weeks, I go get Tommy Pham. I know Pham's not like the best for the vibes in the clubhouse <laughs> necessarily, but are the vibes great right now? I mean, it reminds me of the line of angels in the outfield when the manager sent the dugout and goes, what are we going to do? Fall out of last place. So, I mean, I would honestly think about getting Tommy Pham and sticking him out there, platooning him with Rayleigh. Um, Hanniger plays every day. You can get Hanniger a day off um, and then play, you know, Rayleigh there and Pham as well. So, I mean, you can you can make that work still too. So, uh, that that's what I would do. Absolutely. It's a co I mean, I, I, listen, they, they should be held accountable. The team's not playing well. They're off to another slow start. I, I don't want to let them off the hook. But I do think the players need to play better too. You know, I mean, there are some situations where 
there's nothing the staff can do. Like th- those are professional guys. They've, they've got to bring the runs in there, but listen, ultimately the results fall on the coaching staff. So I'm not going to defend them too much today. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't think a coaching change or a managerial change is going to necessarily like turn things around. I, 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 I it might turn it around because I think this team is going to play better eventually, but I don't think we're going to see any rumors of that until June. If it gets to June and the team is like just still abysmal or, you know, 15 games under fit 12 games under and 10 games out, then I think we will be, um, I I think we'll look at a managerial change at that point, but until then, I don't think anything's going to happen. Let's see the wheel. Scott needs to be more involved. Do you think his laid back approach needs to go? I mean, um, I'll get the out oh, on. Ah, I'll get to that question in a minute. Um, from spinning wheels. Listen, if if the results aren't there, I don't really have a problem with Scott's approach or how he manages. But if the results aren't there, then I mean, yeah, changes could be made. You know, I mean, I, I I'm kind of in the the club of like, I don't know how much impact the managers really necessarily have, and I don't trust John Stanton to necessarily be the guy in charge of finding new GMs and new coaches but i mean yeah if the results aren't there then it, it is what it is the coach is ultimately responsible so i mean i do put it on scott in terms of like the results haven't been good but i also think in you know these are professional guys that have hit well before but i don't think scott's doing anything to make them hit worse i think they're just struggling although i will say this the constant slow starts are frustrating and it is something that if i was in charge i would be talking to the coaching staff about and i'm sure they are but if I was like the GM, I would be sitting down and going, what, what is this? What is going on with these slow starts? Cause it's just, it's happening every year. I don't expect the team to be 15 and one, but could we be like nine and seven, you know, something nine, seven be in first place right now. Let me get to your comment here. Commander Ludwig, the players do play better though. Once they lose Seattle is point that stands out. Why does tail have worse seasons come to Seattle? Go Dodgers. I, I mean, I, to that, I will say, um, better lineup around them probably helps. And it's 16 games. Let's look at that at the end of the year and see what Teo's numbers are. But he's also hitting, you know, in a lineup with Shohei Otani and, and Mookie Betts. That's going to help too. Um, I don't know the park factors on Dodger Stadium, assuming it's more hitter friendly than T-Mobile for righties. Maybe someone could correct me on that. Um, I don't know the National League parks as well. So it, it could be something like that as well. But I mean, better lineup. But yeah, it's frustrating. There are a lot of guys seem to come here. It's a tough park to hit in for right-handed hitters. So, and, and honestly, I don't think Tao was terrible last year. It was just very streaky, very streaky. Um, but the whole thing was to cut down strikeouts. And that's certainly something that um, has not been done. Or it's been the plan to spend the offseason in California then going to freeze. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing, boards like the other teams come in here and seem to hit. Although, I mean, the Cubs didn't exactly put on an offensive show. They hit some home runs and stuff. You know, I it's just like, it's just been so bad. I can understand a little bit colder with the offense. I didn't expect them to come out gangbusters. And even today, like, you know, just someone put one in the gap. You know, if Hanniger hits a base hit there and they win 4-3, it's still not a great offensive day. But, you know, it, it is enough. Um, I'll probably be on for about another 15 minutes, guys, and I'll probably call it. Um, again, trying to read all the comments. I am getting a lot. If you guys want to 100% make sure your comment is read by me, uh, Super Chat um, will help tremendously because then I'll make sure um, you know to see it 100%. So. Um, for the uh, spinning wheel, says Seattle's not a baseball time because the weather is too harsh. You think it's a contributing factor? Uh, yeah, I mean, it probably doesn't help. It's probably not the best area to hit in. But, I mean, we've seen the team win, right? Like, I mean, they've had winning teams in this ballpark before. So, I, I it's like, I don't want to say it's an excuse because I do think it probably does factor in. But it shouldn't factor into the guys being as bad as they've been. You, you know what I mean? Like, if Julio was sitting there like a 704 OPS or something, you, you know, where it's like, okay, just a little bit of a slow start. Um you know, stuff like that, I'd probably be more forgiving, but they have just been so, so bad um, that it's just super frustrating. Boris says, J-Rod won't win an MVP. And yeah, no, exactly. I mean, and, and we, I don't need J-Rod to be the MVP every month, but he just, I mean, he, he's he been worth what, like negative half a win above replacement level. I mean, he's probably been one of the worst, um, 
you know, everyday players. That's the thing. I mean, if you were to go around baseball, I don't have all the numbers in front of me, but I would venture to say that JP has been one of the worst everyday shortstops. Julio, one of the worst everyday center fielders. Um, um, Cal, one of the worst everyday catchers so far. I mean, it's not just like underperforming. I mean, these guys have been straight up atrociously negatively impacting a game to the point like little replacement level players would be upgrades. I mean, if you got me like, you know, 2009 Ben Revere or something out there, you'd be getting better production. If you were to give me like Jesus Sucre behind the plate, you'd be getting better production. That's what's so frustrating too. It's not just, well, they're off to a little cold start. They have just been absolutely, you know, uh, atrocious so far. And again, I will reiterate 16 games. There's still 146 of these. You're a couple wins away, you know, a couple wins in a row away from kind of like going, okay, maybe we're back a little bit here. Um, they have played some good teams. I'm not trying to make excuses here. I'm not trying to, but the Cubs are a pretty good team. Um, you know, Boston's okay. Cleveland's all right. Milwaukee's decent. Who else did they play in there? Toronto's decent. You know, I don't know if any of those teams are amazing. And listen, eventually you got to beat good teams. So that's not an excuse. You know, eventually you're going to have to find a way to win a series. Um, you can't play a hundred games against the A's and truthfully um, like you can't expect to have the same record he had against the A's last year. The A's only beat him once. You got to figure the A's probably play a little bit better against the Mariners this year and expect them. How many times do they play now? 12. Let's just say 12. I mean, I don't expect the A's to go like eight and four against the Mariners, but the Mariners to go eight and four against the A's, you know, you can't expect to go 11 and one against them. Right now, the A's have actually played better ball than the Mariners. Obviously, I don't expect that to hold up, but <laughs> so far they've actually been uh been the better the the better team here. So, you know, what we'll see. Let's see. Williams says M stars tribute to offseason turnover. Yeah, I mean, it it, it you know, you do have a lot of new guys coming in. That does, I think, sometimes play a factor. Um, that that could definitely be a factor for sure. Um, you know, you a lot of a lot of new guys as opposed to having you know, teams like the Braves and stuff, they're running out the same guys outside of, you know, obviously there's always going to be a couple new role players. So that could definitely be a factor. So listen, right now, the way the offense is going, guys, you could throw any theory out there and I won't dismiss it, honestly. I mean, you could tell me that there's some moon thing out there that the Mariners aren't able to connect to. And I'd be like, sure. I mean, <laughs> anything's worth a shot. Wear the hats backwards. I I, I don't care. What whatever Whatever they need to do. Um, I mean, they are better than this. The, these hitters are better than this. Um, and it's just, it's just super frustrating because, you know, this is all the data we have to go on is these 16 games. If we were 80 games into the season and, you know, the team was 45 and 35 and then went six and 10, you know, you can go, okay, like it's a cold stretch, but this has been. This is all we have right now. That this is what we've seen from this team so far, and it has it's been rough. I, I think they'll pull out of it. I, I do, um, but it's just you know it, it just frustrates because even if they pull out of it, you know I, I'm is it enough? Is it enough right now? Even even if you get them back to like being average hitters, because right now they're hitting you know like I would hit you know at the major league level. So it's just. Um, you know, we'll see, you know, we'll see what ends up happening. If you guys have any more, any more questions, throw them in there. I'm kind of out of things to say. Um, I, I agree, gamer. I much prefer talking about wins. Although I will say this, sometimes losses give me actual more to talk about, <laughs> but I'd much rather be talking um, about the wins a hundred percent because it just, it's more fun when you win and baseball, there's a fine line. You know, if Hanniger puts one down the line or Rayleigh's line drive is lifted a little bit, and, you know, gets over the head of a second baseman. The Mariners win. We're all feeling pretty good. They win a series, you know, their first series win of the year, and we're going okay. There's still some frustrating things, but then you lose, and it just ends up, you know, being right back to where we've been the last few games. See, Gilbert, I mean, the A's won six last eight, including series, and our intents to play them. Now they could legit get, yeah, I mean, right? Like, it's, the A's, I mean, I would be blown away if the A's finished better than the Mariners this year, but your point's correct, right? Like, the A's have been better through 16 so far. Luckily, the rest of the division hasn't 
that's another thing. I, you know, a couple people mentioned, I think the Mayors are fortunate to be six and 10. They're fortunate the division, Texas is sitting at top at eight and eight. Uh, that's another thing that they've been fortunate about that nobody's pulled away with it. Cause listen, I mean, what if someone got hot? What if Texas or Houston started 12 and four, 13 and three? Not an impossible thing to have happen. You'd be six and a half games back. And are we already, you know, thinking, okay, maybe wild card at best? Luckily, that hasn't happened. Um, you know, it's it, it's keeping the team afloat, but it's just been it's just been frustrating. See, the game yesterday was down a third base from making two plays. They should have gotten those two. Yeah, I mean, like there's definitely been some things where they've been a little unlucky. Um, you know, Garver had that one down the line yesterday that probably should have gotten down there for a hit. Dylan Moore stung it pretty well. Um, you, you know, so there's definitely been some moments that this team has had where I'd say they've been unlucky. But I always say this, you know, unlucky doesn't mean good and lucky doesn't mean bad. The Mariners have unfortunately been the worst combination. They've been bad and they've been a little unlucky. You, you put that together and, and it's just a, it's a rough recipe for winning baseball games, unfortunately. So, um, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. It happened. We'd still hear it. So, I mean, it, it is, it's definitely frustrating though, you know, for sure. It, it's, they all count, like they all count for one. So it's certainly not, I'm not going to dismiss the losses, you know, at, at all that they, they, they count and they're, they're piling up, you know, you, you wins in April count just as much September. This is a game that when you get to September, we'll look back on and say that maybe they won that Cubs game that they had 28 base runners on. They could be in if they miss it by a game. I, I do think it's early in terms of like, should we throw away the season? No, but they, they all count as one. William, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you in here. Uh, rather be lucky and exactly exa with you. Would much rather have a little luck and be good. Unfortunately, um, the mayors have done the exact opposite. <laughs> They've been the, that, the oppo combo. Uh, appreciate you seeing in here, William. Hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, make sure to check in for that next uh, next member stream. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and that's to the point, too, where it's, um, you know, it, you don't want to have to play catch up. I've, just for once, I'd like to see this team come out, be ahead of people, and be the pace setter for once. Be the team. Look at Texas last year. Texas last year is a perfect example of this. They started out hot. They got cold but they were able to survive it because they started out so well. So they could afford a little bit of a dip. Now I'm sure they would have preferred not to dip quite as much as they did, but you know, th th it was enough. Their early start helped sustain them and they got back on track just enough into September, just enough to get into September and, and make the playoffs. I think Houston ended up winning the division, but you know, the, 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 the early starts matter. They absolutely do. Texas, perfect example of that. Then they win the world series. Frankie says, Ray Kiona says, don't give up yet. I, I am not. I promise for anybody here, I have not given up on the season. I will not. 16 games, even 0-16, I'd be hard-pressed to give up. You know, I, I'd be very tempted, but no, there'll be no give up. Um, I, you probably won't see me really start going, yeah, this isn't working until like mid to late May if it really gets out of hand. Um, but like right now, no, 6 and... And my issue really isn't 6 and 10. I can stomach that. It's just that that they haven't looked good doing it. And that's what makes me concerned. I, I am starting to get some concern about this team. It's just that, you know, again, like I said, if they would have, um, you know, lost a bunch of one run games, it would be super frustrating, but it, it, it's like, I could point to Brash and Santos. I could point to those guys like, okay, we're getting, you know, we have two of the best relievers in baseball coming back. We'll start winning these games. They're not even in those games, essentially. So I can't even point to guys come back. And instead, they actually lose someone today in uh, in Canzone. Would love to have a game. Oh, I could not agree more. Uh, th this right here. Can we have, I just, I want one game where this team is just up 10 to nothing and just can cruise so I can chill, have a drink, and just enjoy this team, um, you know, in, in peace. William Owen 16. I'm hitting the gym, man. I, save one for me. If they were Owen 16, if they were Owen 16, we would just have a blast and have fun. Just, you know, dunking on this team at that point. <laughs> we called out Munoz. Let's call it. Julio's been bad. I mean, they, listen, and, and I don't, 
ever want to pick on one person. But, you know, I said it yesterday, if Julio is not going to be your best player or good, you know, it is not going to matter. And that's kind of been my point with some of the Scott conversation. Now, listen, again, like, you know, Scott's Julio's manager is responsible for it, but nothing is going to matter if Julio Rodriguez and these guys, that's not to put it all on Julio. It goes to JP Cowan, these other guys too. If they don't perform, it's going to be a long season because you can't have your best players not playing well. Um, you know, no matter who you are, I don't care who your team is. You know, there's just not going to be enough. I mean, you might have enough pitching to maybe push 500, but that's that's not what we're looking for. This isn't a rebuild. This is a team that, you know, needs to win. Nolan says, someone in the clubhouse needs to step up and gives JP as a captain. We need that dude. Yeah. I agree, Nolan. I, I My hope was kind of like, that's kind of why I thought Mitch Hanniger um, might get that big hit today. Um, sorry, I got a little cotton mouth going on here. But um, yeah, Mitch Hanniger, I thought would kind of be that guy. That's why I thought Mitch is going to get that big hit today. Um, you know, and, and maybe they are, you know, I don't put, I'm an analytics guy. I also pay attention to clubhouse chemistry and I think it matters. They may be missing Gino in the clubhouse. Only thing I will say there is, though, they did have slow starts even with Gino uh, still, too. William Cook says, Munoz and Castillo vocation. Yeah, yeah, Munoz has been, um, you know, off and on for sure. It looked much better. Um, um, what was it? Was it last night that Munoz pitched or Friday? He looked really good on Friday. Castillo looked better today. Um, a little location problems early on. But yeah, they they we need more consistency from them. They've looked at they've at least had flashes. Um, but for sure, it's it's Munoz has been not quite. We still haven't gotten 2022 Munoz back. 23 was still a good pitcher, but not good enough to mask um, you know, the rest of every everything else that's going wrong. The team is so damn fun to watch. We're rolling the same as rock and same old. Yeah, no, I could not agree more. And this this town, I feel, you know, and again, 16 games. I'm not going to. I want to sound like I'm jumping off the cliff here, but this is such a passionate fan base. Look at all you guys in here. You guys are all frustrated. And I get it. I, I do. And I'm not telling you guys like, oh, it's early to like get over it. I, I'm I'm just saying like we are only at game 16, but you guys are so passionate about this team. You deserve better. You deserve this team to get off to a hot start to, to do this. I mean, look at us. We've had one playoff appearance. I say we, I usually hate when people do that, but I'm doing it. We have had one playoff appearance since 2001 and we went nuts for it. It was amazing. This is, this fan base is ready to erupt, especially now with the Seahawks being kind of in transition a little bit here, not quite at their, their peak of where they were a few years ago. We are ready to erupt for baseball. I don't think anybody in the chat right now is asking this team to be 14 and two. I think even eight and eight, we'd probably be like, okay. Okay, you know, let, let, let's get things going, but it's just, it is just so frustrating. I, I feel the guy, your guy's pain. Yeah, no, that is absolutely true, William. You know, Hanniger is having a, um, you know, he's had a nice season and it can't just be on him. You know, that's it. like Julio Polanco starting to step up a little bit, but Julio, JP, Cal have all got to step up. Saying, okay, I, well, I appreciate that, Emmett. Thank you. I know some people get like weird on that. I usually try not to say it because I know some people are like, oh, you're not on the team. I'm like, well, we're all kind of part of the team, right? We we certainly have given them enough of our money, I think, over the years to maybe have a little ownership stake. <laughs> I just, yeah. And and Nolan, that's my frustration. That they, they don't look competitive. I mean, I guess they were a little more competitive today for sure, but Overall, this is a six and 10 team with like a negative 25 run differential. Um, you know, it's not like they're just losing close games. They have, and they're not jumping out to leads. They're playing comeback baseball every day. And, and William Cook, to your point about playing catch up in the season, it's kind of ironic because that's what they're doing each game. It's kind of a microcosm. They're having to play it through the season. They're playing it day to day. Um, you know, they've been fortunate, which sounds crazy, but they were fortunate to rally for that game in Boston. They were fortunate. I don't want to say maybe fortunate in Toronto to win that one because, I mean, Cal smacks the home run. Polanco catches a little blooper, but fortunate that that blooper didn't fall in. You know, this team could easily, easily be 4-12, and 3-13, and and it would be a well-deserved 4-12, and 3-13. It, it would be. 
there are some youngsters that could help, but they won't get called up. Yeah. I, the problem is like the youngsters, you know, like bliss and stuff that are probably the closest to knocking on the door, the, the people they'd replace crazy enough, you know, Rojas Urias are actually doing their job. That's the, and, and isn't that funny? The, the guys were probably most worried about, you know, how would they do? And I miss Gino, but they've been okay. Like, I'm not saying they've been perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they've kind of been like the least of my worries right now. Um, you know, so I think right now it's not even a point where really the, the youngsters um, could save the team because I think they all play positions that just are, are taken by the positions that are struggling are guys that, you know, you know, don't really have anybody behind them. You know, obviously Julio is going to play, you know, there's not much you can do there. You can give him the day off occasionally. Um, you know, maybe Tyler Locklear at first, but you, you know, up until the last two days, Ty was, it's also one of the things with early in the season, your stats can just go like this game to game, you know, Ty's numbers now probably don't look great, but going into today, they were fine. You, you know, so that is one of the problems with early season. I will still say every player on this team is probably still a five for five away from upping their OPS by 200 points. Um, let's see here. Scott has no person out energy. Wait, that kind of sounds like the vibe around the team. Yeah, you know, could be. Like I said, I'm I'm open to listen to anything. I, I'm not big on hating on Scott necessarily, but if the team you know doesn't produce and doesn't win, you know you're not firing Julio, you're not firing players. So you know it's going to be the manager that takes the fall for that. I, I want to say takes the fall. I mean it is ultimately on Scott. So I'm not going to fight that too much. I, I'm I think a lot of it falls on the players to play better but scott's ultimately responsible he is he is the skipper so i mean he's got to figure it out something you know well we'll see we'll see scott looks like he's hitting the night life viagra game <laughs> uh i think losing will do that <laughs> yeah i agree william um let yeah you know canzone was off to a nice start it was one of the few guys hitting for power right now um and everything. So I'm hoping Luke Rayleigh can fill in and be okay. Um, you know, I think, I think he can be, I, I would like to see this team go out and maybe get a Tommy fam. I, I, again, I know maybe not the best guy for vibes, but this clubhouse don't know how good the vibes are right now anyways. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. This guy's just a feet boy that looked out by knowing definitely part of it. I mean, I won't deny that. Unfortunately, that's a lot of the world. It's a lot of who you know more than what you know. Unfortunately, um, that's I, trust me. That that's the same thing. A lot of GMs, you look at their history and find out their dad was a scout and stuff like that. So, you know, unfortunately, that's just part of part of it. You know, a little bit with these guys is you know it's who they know. And and again, like you know, if this team ends up really falling out of contention, and you know, Scott is fired. I, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Like it is what it is. He's, he's been here a while. He is ultimately responsible. I don't necessarily think he is the problem. Um, but you know, someone's got, someone has to take responsibility, but I, I still think that a minimum would be in June would be my guess. I don't think you're going to see anything, um, unless something, you know, really, really drops off then, you know, so, so be it. But, um, yeah, I don't think that would happen until June if they really dropped off. And, and I think they will, play better. So we'll see you cheer if they got rid of them. I mean, listen, it's, it's, you know, it, I, I, you know, he ultimately be responsible. Mitchell says, I'm sorry, but service that shouldn't be fired. It's not his fault. Kermit mass struck. That's Mitchell. That's kind of my take on it. To be honest, I don't think it's his fault that the lineup's not hitting and that the pitchers aren't pitching. Well, my point is more just that like, ultimately, if this team does not succeed, you know, he's on last year of his deal. Someone is going to, you know, go. And if that's the case, that's the case. Like he is ultimately responsible. But I, I'm Mitchell. I'm pretty much with you. I, I don't think it's on him that the hitting isn't hitting and the pitchers have struggled. These are all veteran guys that, you know, it's just, it, it, it's like, I, I mean, Julio has been a good hitter. I mean, maybe the slow starts a little bit, like, you know, talk to him like, Hey, is there something with Julio? Why he's always off to a slow start, but, I mean, Mitch Garver, it's not like Mitch Garver came in and they told him to do something differently. He's been a good hitter in the past. Polanco's starting to heat up a little bit. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. 
Daddy Wedge says, I don't dislike Scott. I just wonder how much is his fault. That's, you know, and I, I don't know if we'll ever really know, you know, and let's see if they can get out of this first and foremost. But, um, you know, I, that's me. I don't really know how much is on him. And maybe it is like, I'm not trying to dismiss anybody in here that that's saying like he needs to go. Maybe it is. Maybe there is something he is not doing to get the players motivated to start the seasons. I will not dismiss that at all. I am. I'm open to all ideas for the most part really am like I'm, I will listen to anything. I think it's all worth taking in all the information, but I, I don't know how much is on him. I, I tend to think, I don't think that um, firing him will necessarily, you know, and going to Negron or Manny act is going to fix anything. They may play better just because I think they will play better, but that might be something more for the off season. Gunny Studios, yes, yes, today is my birthday, so just <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you very much. Of course, the Mariners leave me a nice turd on the doorstep for the birthday. Gunny, good to see you, brother. Hope you are doing well. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Yes, 3K. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all if you're in here. Um, hit the like button for me. If you're not subscribed, then uh, please hit that sub button. But thank you all um, for helping me get to 3,000 subs. It is truly, truly um, you know, a, a very, very, um, just very special. And that's all because of you guys. Thank you guys so much. Mitchell, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, daddy, thank you. That sounded weird to say. Daddy. <laughs> thank you. God. Thanks, man. I'm going to appreciate that wild board. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Zach, appreciate it. Nolan, appreciate that, man. Thank you guys so much. And wild boar, appreciate it very, very much. Um, thank you. Um, William, y'all, you don't have to get me anything, but I will, um, put my email into, um, the community tabs for members. And then you can just shoot me an email, man. You do not have to get me anything, man. That is very gracious of you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you guys all for the, for the birthday wishes. You guys did not have to, did not have to do it. Gunny, Gunny, Gunny mentioned it. I wasn't going to bring it up. Thank you guys so much. I, I do appreciate that. You guys, you guys, everybody in here right now has made this, um, a, a good, a good birthday. Um, I'm seven and a quarter board. This is actually a snapback that I have on right now, but I'm a uh, seven and a quarter. I, it, it depends. I do have some that are seven and three eighths. I had a couple that were seven and an eighth. You know, they always run a little bit differently, but usually seven and a quarter is that sweet spot. Um, so that, thank you. HP Duro. Appreciate that very, very much guys. Yeah. As soon as I said that, I mean, I was like, Oh God, that did not come out right when I said that, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yeah. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. Gunny. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you, Frankie. Appreciate it very much. Very much guys. Truly, truly appreciate it. Um, yeah. And I feel like the, the sizing has been different when I was younger, the seven and eights would fit pretty well. Now I'm, now I'm seven and a quarter, but thank you guys so much for the birthday wishes. You guys made this, um, a, a much, much better birthday for me. We we knew the Mariners weren't going to do anything for my birthday. Let's be honest, right? Like we we knew that it wasn't going to be relying on those guys is always something. So um, you know we'll, we'll end up seeing what happens. But I'm going to probably get out of here, guys. I'm going to go spend a little time with the family. I appreciate you guys. I'm off. Thanks for joining today, Nas. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, everybody have a good one. Yeah, I'm probably going to get out of here. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely a gobble ghoul and for sure. And I get the Sopranos going. Uh, William, thanks for joining me as always, my friend, you take it easy. I'll put my email in the community tab there so you can, uh, reach out to me. Mitchell asked, am I going to be doing a C Seahawks draft? I'll be honest. I've been so focused on baseball. I probably will do a draft recap. I don't know the prospects all that well. I have really tried to dive into baseball so much more this year, but I will definitely talk a little bit, um, about it for sure. We will definitely have some draft talk. Jay says, happy birthday. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. See, pause when I come reviewing the games, which I was at pause really sucks being a Mariners fan. You know, and, and really it's, I get just as frustrated as you guys. And I appreciate the kind words, Jay. Thank you so much. Um, but um, lost my train of thought there. I, I do still believe in this team. I, I honestly do. I think this is a good baseball team. They are better than how they're playing. I, I They are 100% better than this, but it does not make it less frustrating. That does not make it less frustrating at all. And that's that's the thing. And that's where I'm at. I am with you guys all the way on frustration. And we're going to get through this together. We're in this together, guys. All right? So don't panic. And if you guys need anything, you reach out to me. Like, and, I, and I'm serious. Like, 
you know, mental health stuff. I know it's kind of a weird tangent, but like, I, I'm here for you guys. You know, I consider a lot of you guys, my family, you guys have been with me for a while. So, you know, if you guys ever need anything that, you know, I don't know about financially, but you know, anything you guys want to chat about, just, you know, DM me on Twitter or something. You know, I'm here for you guys. Like I uh, listen, a lot of us turn to baseball as an escape sometimes, right? Like this is, some of us have really tough jobs that stink to go to maybe, you, you know, trouble at home. And we turn to baseball to get away from it a little bit. Um, I'm very blessed to have, you know, a job that sometimes drives me nuts, but you know, for the most part, it's pretty good. And I love my family, but you know, and then when you turn to it and it can kind of be there for you, it's tough when it, when it stings and it really can, can bother and get to people. So I, I, I get it. I get it. Um, let's see one of the worst games that, yeah, that one was brutal. Devin, Davin, Davin. I'm sorry. I think I said that incorrectly. I apologize. But yeah, that one was, that's why I did a live. I had to come on and talk to you guys. I needed to vent. It says off topic, but I hate when the NFL went to Nike. Now I hate the MLB did it too. Yeah, oh God, the MLB jerseys are terrible. I was joking with some people about doing a jersey giveaway for a stream. Do you guys even want the new jerseys? <laughs> Football has been a little bit better than baseball, but I, I'm with you on that 100%. <clears throat> William, always, you're always in my thoughts and prayers, man. I hope you're doing well. Really glad you could make it um, today. I'm going to get to the rest of the comments here. <coughs> Super professional coughing. I got a frog in my throat. I will, Emmett, appreciate you joining the stream, my friend. <laughs> this is so professional. Oh, my gosh. And I have no water here. I'm going to have to log off, guys. Let me get to this last question from William here. There's talent there. Salk said, I think just play. Yeah, exactly. If these guys just all played as I'm dying from something in my throat here. <laughs> Super professional. This is what you guys wanted to see. Um, yeah, they just all played like to their league averages, they, they would be fine. They would absolutely be fine. That, that It's well said. Salk's right there. Probably from injuries to battle. You are, man. You, you are definitely strong. You, you've got it, William. Like I said, you are in uh, my family's thoughts and prayers, man, uh, all the time. So you you got this. You guys got this. Have a great evening, guys. Don't let the Mariners ruin your Sunday. Um, and have a good one. Have a good one. Mitchell, that's what it's always about. It, it's kind of a group therapy session. That's why like, I don't dismiss you know, um, anybody's takes, unless it's something like people get into like, you know, racist stuff that, that I'm not going to tolerate, but people want Scott fired. Like, I'm going to listen to that. Like, I get it. I absolutely do. People are frustrated with Julio. I am too. I absolutely am. Now I'll try to bring you guys back and go, okay, like, can Scott do a whole lot about this? Maybe he can, maybe he can't, you know, Julio should be better, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating. Oh, where's my staff? I, I need a staff. I got to start giving some of you guys um, admin <clears throat> stuff for the live streams just so we don't have to deal with, you know, <clears throat> spamming and stuff. So that's something I will do next time. You know, people like you, William, the, the gamer who's been in, you know, a lot of my streams gets you guys some, some hammers on there. But you are welcome, my friend. Good to see you in here. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you again. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mitchell. Have a great night, everybody. Let's talk about a win tomorrow. Can they win? Can we have a win tomorrow? Do you guys want to do a live stream for the game tomorrow? Maybe anybody down for that live stream, maybe for the game. I'll try to do it tomorrow. Um, and we can have a game therapy session tomorrow, but have a great night, everybody go Mariners take care. And I love you guys. Good night. Peace.